Chronic refractory tendinopathy is a very common problem. Today, the definitive treatment for the refractory case is a surgical procedure. It is characterized by cutting through and removing the diseased tissue. An innovative technology that has been introduced by 10X Health somewhat simulates surgery in that it also cuts through and removes diseased tissue. But it does so with local anesthesia and a percutaneous insertion of the ultrasonic energy. The safety and efficacy is not influenced by the setting in which this is performed. Today, we will be demonstrating the procedures in an ambulatory surgical center. However, they can equally and effectively be done in a procedural room or even in a clinical setting. This 31-year-old male has a desk job and a seven-month history of lateral elbow pain. It interferes with his day-to-day -day activity and he has some night pain. He's had one cortisone injection that was helpful for a couple of weeks only. He's tried night splints and activity modification, and he still has pain that interferes with day-to-day -day activities. I, I know you've had pain in your uh, elbow for some time now. Um, let me ask you, uh, in the last two or three months, do you think overall your symptoms are getting better, worse, or staying the same? I, I think over time they've been getting progressively worse. And how does it bother you? Is there any particular thing or is it just routine daily activities? Uh, just normal daily activities that bothers me. Well, uh, if I were to tell you that eventually this will go away, you just have to kind of tough it out. Does it, does it have a sense as far as you're concerned that this could resolve on its own? Well, I can rest it and the pain goes away. Yeah. But as soon as I resume activities, the pain comes back. Okay, well, uh, would you mind showing me with one finger where you have most of your pain? Uh, it's right here. Let me just take a look and tell me if I can hit the area that hurts the most. That's right there. Okay, right in this area. Well, that's kind of the classic spot where we see this kind of problem. Now, do you have any pain in your forearm at all, or is it all just right under my thumb? Uh, it's just right under your thumb. Well, I, I do think you're a candidate for the procedure, and we've discussed uh, the procedure. Do you have any questions or concerns? Uh, no concerns. Well, I think we're uh, ready to go ahead and proceed if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. The patient is positioned to allow the procedure to be comfortably performed and be comfortable for the patient as well. So how are you doing? Good. Okay. Well, I'll tell you everything we're going to do. The first step is I want to just confirm where the problem is. So I'm going to poke around and you tell me when I hit that area that, that we found in the clinic that bothers you the most. Right there. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Now the next step is I'm going to take a look at it with the ultrasound. I'm gonna make sure that we can see the extent of the problem, and that way we're more uh, confident that we can uh, treat it all and, and get rid of the pain for you. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna confirm the area that you're hurting, making sure that we see the extent of the problem. So I can see the bone and I can I can see the, where the tendon is attaching and there is a, a problem with the tendon, just as we had talked about. And this is the kind of thing that we typically see and does respond to this treatment. It's fairly extensive and does explain your symptoms. So I, I think it's reasonable to go ahead with the procedure. So I'll tell you everything we're going to do. The first step is we're going to clean this off, and then we're going to prepare it just like we're doing a cortisone injection, and then we'll proceed with the actual treatment itself. So we're going to clean this up, make sure that there's no chance that this can get infected. Okay, now we'll go ahead and bend this up with the local anesthetic and take care of this for you. 
A thin layer of non-sterile gel is used to cover the face of the ultrasound transducer, and it is placed in a sterile sleeve. So we've marked the area of maximum tenderness. The patient confirmed that it is right in this region, which is the site of the origin of the extensor carpi radialis brevis. You feel a little stick and a little bit of, little bit of discomfort. Sorry. First, you make a skin wheel because that's a painful area. And then go ahead and advance the needle down through the fascia to the point where you're feeling the bone. You should be able to tap on the bone and you may feel a little discomfort here. We're injecting approximately two to three cc's of 1% or fast acting local anesthetic. And then we're anesthetizing the track. I do like to tap on the bone with the local anesthetic since we uh, do tap on the bone with the microtip. This is sterile water soluble gel. So we'll now confirm the pathology. So we can see the kind of classic slope of the lateral epicondyle. There's a hypoechoic or blackened area right at the apex. The radial head is off to the right. And we can see a bony prominence, which is called an enthesophyte or a little osteophyte. And right at the base of that is the blackened area, which is the site of the pathology. So with that, we will introduce the microtip by making a stab wound through the skin and continuing that stab wound through the fascia. Again, I think this is an important step in order to be sure that the microtip penetrates the dense fascia into the pathology. This is the 10X microtip TX1. We will introduce this now through the stab wound. We can confirm the area of interest. You can see the microtip being advanced to the area of pathology. And then we'll go ahead and start treating at this point as we advance it to the slope of the epicondyle. You can see the orientation is exactly proper. Ordinarily in a lateral epicondyle treatment, the duration of the treatment is generally around 45 seconds. In this instance, we're right exactly in the site of the lesion. That's exactly where we would hope to be. You can see it's right at the base of the enthesophyte. A common question is whether or not we remove the enthesophyte uh, one can do that, it's not necessary. The pathology is right at the base, right precisely where the microtip is treating the lesion. So this has only been approximately 20 seconds, but frankly, this is a relatively small lesion, very discreet, uh, and this probably is adequate or close to adequate treatment. You might be able to make out the artifact that is seen in the ultrasound when the energy is being imparted. This is a nice 
visual so that you know that you are treating that particular area that you can visualize with the ultrasound guidance. So there we can see again the anthesified and see the probe right at the base, which is precisely the manner in which this particular problem should be treated. Now notice that there's no more energy, you can't hear that sound and you hear the signal. So at this point, there's no energy being imparted, there's no aspiration and uh, irrigation. The system is shut down. You let the uh, pressure off the foot pedal and then it has cleared and we can continue treatment. And this is right precisely the area and the goal of treatment. I'm uh, penetrating the surface of the bone to stimulate some healing response as you see on the ultrasound. And uh, that really would conclude uh, the treatment here. Does this uh, cause any problem? No? Good. Okay, so with that, we'll withdraw the microtip. The area is cleaned. It's a simple puncture site. So this area is treated uh, postoperatively with a simple stereostrip dressing either one or two. Typically one is sufficient in this instance. I think I'll put two on. Formal suturing is not necessary with this technique. We then place a sterile occlusive dressing Then wrap this with a ace bandage or a compressive stockinette, and uh, that concludes the procedure. At the time of the clinical examination, it is important for the patient to point to the area of maximum tenderness and to confirm that area of maximum tenderness by the examination. It is also very important on the medial side to assess the status of the ulnar nerve. Flex and extend the elbow to assure the ulnar nerve is not subluxing. If the ulnar nerve does sublux, the procedure can still be safely performed, but the elbow is left extended. One should always confirm the pathology with an ultrasound examination before the procedure itself. The area in question is prepped and draped, just as if a steroid injection is to be performed. When introducing the local anesthetic, we also go to the bone at the site of the pathologic tissue attachment to the bone. The skin is incised with an 11 blade knife. However, this blade also is introduced through the fascia to facilitate the entry of the microtip to the pathologic tissue. The motion of the microtip is back and forth. Avoid out of plane motions as this is not an effective technique. There are visual clues to complete treatment, particularly if there's a hypoechoic area. This undergoes a transformation which indicates the area has been adequately treated that can be observed by the ultrasound examination. So how are you doing? Good. Are you having any pain now? Uh, no, no pain. Uh, did you have any discomfort or pain during the procedure itself? Uh, there was a little discomfort when the local anesthetic was applied, but I just see. a little bit of pressure during the procedure. Okay. Not too bad, though. Huh? No. Okay, good. Well, you may have some pain tonight or discomfort, and I would recommend that you put some ice maybe 10 to 15 minutes on the area uh, between dinner and when you go to bed at night, and then uh, take a couple of Tylenol tonight. And then when you get up tomorrow, take another couple and see how it goes. But if you're having discomfort, it's usually pretty well covered just with with the Tylenol. Okay. And I don't want you to do much for the next two or three days. Um, if everything's feeling okay in a couple of days, you can gradually increase your activity, but it's just a day-to-day -day routine sedentary type of thing for about three weeks. 
Now, I need to see you between two and three weeks. Check it out, make sure everything's okay. And if everything is good, then I'm gonna allow you to resume normal activity. Not challenging it, but just kind of normal activity. And if by six weeks from now, everything's good, I'm gonna turn you loose. But uh, I wanna see you in two to three weeks. So here's my contact number. And uh, call me if you have any questions. Um, and here is a summary of everything I've just told you. Okay. So um, I anticipate that you should do well. But if you again, uh, if you have any questions or any problems, don't hesitate to call me. Okay. Okay. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome.